if you knew about this and you didn't tell me, you might as well just unsubscribe now. Ah. Hey guys, I'm making this video because, well, I've discovered something yesterday that was out for two years and no one told me. Why? We are talking about Zigbee to MQTT dashboard, a very nice web interface that you can use to organize, add and manage your Zigbee devices inside, well, wherever you're running your Zigbee to MQTT. And up until yesterday, I was blissfully unaware that this is a solution I could use and save myself a little bit of time and make everything hmm, simpler. And I got really comfortable at doing that to the point that it wasn't really a hindrance. But I can fully appreciate the fact that if you're new to Zigbee to MQTT, you probably want to start with a dashboard like this. So in case you are not aware of it and, well, you weren't living in a cave like me for the last two years, then I'm gonna bring you up to speed. But first, what is that secret Zigbee to MQTT dashboard? Well, it's a web interface that basically will, well, change whatever you're clicking on the web interface into a command and edit your Zigbee to MQTT settings. Is it game breaking? No, but you will make everything look pretty and easy. And well, let's face it, that's the point. And because it's not available by default and I wasn't aware of it for two years, that's, that's why I call it secret. So how do you enable it? Well, you'll have to log into your, let's say, Raspberry Pi in this circumstance and access your configuration YAML document on file. At the bottom of the file, just type in front end and be mindful of indentation because YAML is indentation sensitive. And you can also specify the port that you're going to have your interface. By default, it's on port 8080. Once this is done, just simply save the changes with Ctrl plus X, exit out and restart your Zigbee to MQTT so everything would be working. I know that's been out for a long time, but bear in mind this is still treated as experimental and it's best to back up your Zigbee to MQTT settings and devices and everything, so do it before you proceed. If you want to know how, I'm gonna list everything in the article linked in the description, so do check it out if you just want step-by-step -step instructions instead. So how do you access it? You probably know already, all you have to do is just type the IP address of the device you're using followed by a, a port number, in this case 8080 or whatever port number you have selected and you'll be greeted by a beautiful web interface for your Zigbee to MQTT. In a tab devices, you can manage your devices. You'll be able to rename them, so change the default IDs into more friendly names, delete the devices and edit properties or even rec uh, trigger reconfiguration if your device supports that. So it's a very useful screen. Another cool information on screen is the battery information that you can have at glance. Now granted, you won't get any notifications when the battery is running out. For that, you'll have to use my profile. Click on that if you're interested how to get that but it's a very good uh, screen for overview of what you actually have in your network. The second tab is the dashboard, and the dashboard is basically a card display of every single device on your Zigbee network with some basic parameters. Now, my criticism of that would involve that not every device listed there will have all the toggles available for it, so you will have a limited controls of the devices uh, in the Zigbee 2 MQTT network, but most of the basic information and toggles should be there, so yay! And just to note that if you see any question marks, it means that the status isn't confirmed yet and you'll have to toggle it one way or another to get the latest state and save that in Zigbee 2 MQTT dashboard. So do that and then you'll have a full set of controls for every device. And while the search bar is still available, you can't really organize uh, cards in any other way, which is a shame. Next up is the map, and map will give you a lot of useful information about your mesh and the health of it. At a glance you can see which devices are connected directly to your coordinator, which use the different routers, and how your mesh is built. Also you'll find the signal strength for particle connections, which is great when troubleshooting uh, devices that are not responsive, and verifying that you're not reaching any limits on your mesh network first and for direct children or maybe for total uh, number of devices supported by your coordinator. 
next panel are the settings and you'll find a lot of different settings most of them will be associated with your uh, configuration YAML. So instead of editing that, you can just simply uh, jump into the web uh, interface and make your amends there. It's very useful for changing, for example, MQTT settings, passwords, and etc, etc. Whatever you're going to change in there, be careful, because this will strongly affect how your ZigBee MQTT is working. And if you mess something up, well, it's a good thing that you have option to backup and restore your configurations just from that section. One thing that I really appreciate is the fact that we have external converters. Now, adding external converters as easy as just dropping your code in there and saving it. It's much easier than actually creating file uh, using SSH. Thanks. Next on the list are groups, which pretty much self-explanatory. You can add, edit and delete the groups. So that will help you manage devices in your ZigBee networks that are responsible for certain types of controls or assigned to a certain rooms. I don't think I have to explain anything in here. You probably know what that means. After that, we have OTA, so over the air updates. And if your device supports OTA updates, then this is where you can force the device to check for updates and pull the new firmware so it works like intended, I guess. Just remember, not all Zigbee devices will support this, so it really depends on what devices you've got in your mesh network. After that, we have TouchLink, and to be honest, this is the first time I hear about it, so I had to Google it. And apparently it's the way to actually talk to the devices, or Zigbee devices, that are nearby, but not included in your network. I'm not 100% sure what I would do with it, but uh, I'm sure there are some smart people that will give me some ideas. Use the comment section below for that and uh, keep me educated. Logs is another useful feature of this web interface because you can easily get the information about what's going on in your Zigbee mesh network. It's easier to copy the information than actually using SSH and the information is also clear with uh, some filters and search options to look for particular devices and just get the information you need rather than having a block of text that you have to copy and to another editor to, to actually make it use, usable. And in case you really know what you're doing with Zigbee 2 MQTT and you're writing your own scripts, you also have extensions where you can add your own scripts to Zigbee 2 MQTT and expand it further. I have no idea what I'm doing with it, so I'm not going to be, you know, tutoring anyone about it because, let's face it, I never use that feature, so it's all right. Anyway, I hope I brought this to your attention and from now on you're going to be using this web interface to manage your Zigbee to MQTT devices, whether you're using Node Red, Home Assistant or whatever. Super useful and it saved me a lot of time. I was actually so frustrated that I considered designing something in Node Red that would do a part of it. Not all of it, but a part of it. But uh, thankfully I stumbled across this and I don't have to do any of it. I'm happy. Now, I know I've been sleeping in a cave for two years and I've missed it completely and I should have let you know about it earlier ago, but there's another thing that you probably want to uh, Google, which is Tasmo Admin. It's another um, web interface, this time for Tasmo devices, but I guess I'm gonna maybe cover that next. Again, I'm coming late to the party. So, if you don't want to miss that, you know how it works, how YouTube works and how to get notifications and stuff like that. I'll leave that to you and I'm not going to explain that. But I have some social media listed right now in the description of the video, so follow me there, start a conversation, let me know what else I've missed in the last two years. Because I have a feeling I've missed a lot. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.